Hey, hello there once again, fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders. Well, I'm back once more with another one of my back to basic videos. Today, it's time to talk about rotary encoders. You know, if you think about it, it's kind of like in your car, you have um, encoders like to raise the volume on the radio, to change the stations, the tuning, uh, sometimes even the temperature control on the air conditioning or the fan speed for the air conditioning and all that. So in airplanes, you know, they can be used for all kinds of things like um, autopilot, you know, to change the course, the heading, the airspeed, uh, the altitude. Um, you can also use them for things like tuning the radios, you know, the common nav radios, uh, the altimeter settings. And we can also use them for all the trims like elevator trim, rudder trim, and aileron trim. So they're pretty handy devices. All right, so before we go any further, I would like to go over to the website and we're going to go over to the hardware section and then we're going to go to encoders here and this like i always tell you guys i highly recommend please come to their website and read all the pertinent information about any type of component or anything you're trying to get done um, i probably read this website 20 30 times over the course of you know the five six years that i've been uh doing these videos you know with SimVimex and real sim control so right here they talk a little bit about encoders you know, they basically talk about the how they look, you know, the basic layout of the encoders, the pins and all that. And then they talk a little bit about setting the correct encoder type because we're going to talk a little bit about that. There's different type one, type two, type three. And if you actually want to use just a pair of buttons as an encoder, he considers that type four in the configurator. So now right here they go into how the encoder actually works, which is basically a sense a bunch of pulses you know that are either zeros or ones or a combination thereof and that's what makes the encoder um tell the plugin that you know you're changing it you're increasing it or decreasing it depending on the direction that it's going so this right here explains it very well how that works that's way above my pay grade so i'm not even going to get into that i'm just going to tell you to come and read it and then way at the bottom they talk about the encoders that come with a little circuit board um, built in which is a KY040 and uh, they recommend that you desolder the encoder from the board which in my opinion is uh, why are you going to buy them with the board if you're just going to desolder them might as well just buy them without the board but I've used them with the board and I've used them even though right here it says do not connect it to the five volts I've I have actually like eight of them connected on my home cockpit simulator here and they work perfectly fine but I, i've been trying them like i'm going to show you today without connecting them to the five volts and they also work fine with the board so I'll, this is what i said i'm going to tell you guys of something not to do that is directly opposite of what the website says but that's the way i did it since the beginning and it's working perfectly fine for me but of course it's not recommended by them so now we're going to go over to my uh, bench here and we're going to go over the different types of encoders so this one right here, uh, this is an EC11 encoder. Um, they are the most basic ones you can find. That's probably the cheapest ones that I've seen. And they have, you know, they come, a lot of times they just come by themselves, but a lot of times they come with a kit where they have the a washer, a nut, and then the knob that you're gonna use with it, which I highly recommend always looking for the kits. But lately I've been looking and I haven't found any kits that come with a nut and the washer. I've only found them that come with a knob, but um, it's actually much better if you do it that way. And they have a push button also. Um, and they're pretty basic, you know, so basically you're going to have two connections for the push button, which is a positive and the negative. And then you're going to have on the other side, one side for the encoder. The middle one is a common, which is the ground. And then the other side is the other side for the encoder. So that's going to be that whether you're going, you know, to the left or to the right. Um, that's going to determine what pin the signal goes out to, to the Arduino. And I have one here that I connected that I'm actually going to be using as an example later. So pretty much the grounds, as I've always said before and everything else, you can connect the grounds together and then just have ground, one ground wire going to your common ground. And then the two for the encoder are the green one and the yellow one in this case. And the blue one is going to be the one for the push button. Okay, so those right there, um, as you can see on this uh, eBay website here, you can find these, you know, on Alibaba, on eBay, on Amazon. You can find them all over the place, but obviously 
the whole point of this is going to be to find the cheapest ones you can find but you know right here you can see there's some for five of them for fourteen dollars and eighty cents over here you got uh they're way more expensive but these look like they're much higher quality than the ones i have and then you got 10 of them here for only 13.77 you know so that's a pretty good deal right there um and these do come with a with a washer and a nut but it's just one and then it's a bid item so you know that's for me that's not good but if you keep looking eventually you'll come across some that do come with a uh, with a knob also or you're going to have to buy your own knobs too which is going to increase the price of course so that's the ec11 one okay and if we go back to my bench here the next one we have is the ky040 this is the one that i started buying when i started building my home simulator and basically this has um, the ground wire and then it would have the five volt pin which we're not supposed to use and then it has the switch pin in the middle and then it has the they call it dt and clock like he says on the website the reference to those pins have nothing to do with simvim at all but in my experimentation with these i found that these are the two that you use for the encoder which i guess you could say is clockwise and counterclockwise so that's how we're going to connect it and how you're going to see it used later on and those right there if we go back to the website and we look at the ky040 you can see there's some here for five pieces for eight dollars and 69 cents so actually they're cheaper than if you buy them without the board you know so it's supposed to be the opposite but you can see some here that they're cheaper and here's some that come with a knob but they're 1325 they're a little more expensive you know but if you just look around like i said look on ebay look on amazon look on alibaba or aliexpress or wherever and you can find you know packages that come with a lot of them for probably reasonable prices of course if you order them from china they're going to be much cheaper too and last but not least we got the prop wash simulations dual rotary encoder now when you order them this is this is by far the best one to use for like the radio panels and they actually sell radio panels with these encoders already in them but with this one you get the dual rotary encoder here you get the two knobs and then you get the little board and then you get the pins that go with it to to solder on um, you can see right here that i have one that i had already i have already connected and i just soldered the wires directly onto there and then i already connected them over here on my input multiplexer so this one here uh, it's it seems a little bit more complicated but all you're going to do when you get yours is you're going to basically put the dual rotor encoder onto the circuit board here and then you're going to solder of course you got to solder the little pins and they barely stick out like when i put it in there right now you know now it's it's on there but you can barely feel the pins sticking out you know so you're going to solder them and then they're going to stay in place of course so if I remember correctly, the lowercase b and a and the common are for the outer encoder, which is going to have the big knob. And then the uppercase a and b and common are for the inner rotary encoder, which is going to have the little knob. And then the bottom over here is for the switch. So you can make whichever one you want, the common and the, and the signal pin for the switch. Um, what I did in mine is because like i said before you can connect all the commons i actually connected these two commons together and one of these together and then i just ran one ground wire which is what you're seeing over here so i didn't run three different ground wires i just jumpered the three commons and then send it out through one wire here and then of course we got the the blue and the white over here are going to be for the outer encoder and then you're going to have the yellow and the green are for the inner encoder and then you got the red wire back here that's going to go to the switch on the encoder that's one thing i think i probably forgot to mention all of these encoders have a switch so it's, whether it's this one this one or this one they all have a switch and if we go over to the prop wash simulations uh, website we can see that this ro dual rotary encoder kit with a switch and everything that comes included in it which is in this little picture here is twelve dollars and ninety five cents all right so we're going to go back over to my desk now and we're going to connect the rest of my uh encoders that we're going to be assigning functions to and showing you how to connect them so 
All right, so as I mentioned earlier already, I already took the liberty of connecting this one just to save a little bit of time. But like I said earlier, this is uh, the blue and the white uh, wires here are going to be for the outer encoder. The green and the yellow wire are for the inside encoder, the in inner one. And then the red wire is going to be for the push button at the end of it. So we're going to just leave that one there. And now we're going to connect the one with the circuit board, which they recommend that you do not use with a circuit board. But I'm going to show you that it works for perfectly fine. And hopefully they won't get mad at me for showing you this. So on this one, the white wire is for the push button. And then the gray and the purple are for the encoder. So the way I like to connect them is I like to connect the encoder um, on, like let's say, for now I'm going to connect it on pins 13 and 14. And then the push button I'm going to connect on pin number 15. So I always like to have the push button after the encoder just to make it easier for assigning and everything for me to remember where they're connected. All right. And then, of course, our common ground wire is going to just go to our common rail right there. So that one's ready to go. And then I'm going to take this one here, which is the EC11, a very basic encoder. And I'm going to just go ahead and connect this one. I'm going to connect it to pins number 48, 49 for the encoder. And then pin number 50 is going to be the push button. So you can see that I have my common ground wire here. So this one, uh, the green one and the yellow one are going to be the encoder. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on 48 and 49 here. And then the blue one is going to be number 50 for the push button. And that push button, technically, I can put it wherever I want. The only ones that are very important that they stay in order are going to be the, the ones for the encoder. So there's my common ground wire there. That's one thing I did forget to mention. So the ones for the encoders, they do have to be on consecutive pins. Kind of like what I said about the rotary switches. Encoders, you know, whatever you have for the encoders do have to be right next to each other. Now, you know, you can't connect, let's say, one on pin number 10 and one on pin number 15. They have to be 10 and 11 or 13 and 14 like I did right here. That's the only thing that's very important. Now, another good thing about encoders is that they do have inversion. Like I mentioned for the toggle switches that if you happen to get the, the order of the connections here wrong, um, you, you can put inversion in the plugin. So that's not a problem then. You wouldn't have to always come back and switch them. All right. And of course, I had already decided ahead of time what I'm going to do for this. So the, the EC11 that we have connected directly on the Arduino on pins 48 and 49, I'm going to connect those to the autopilot heading select or heading set. So if we go over to, we're going to go to direct input. We go to aircraft 737 and we go to the MCP panel here. And I can get this out of the way. And so we're going to use the encoder here for the heading and we're going to put that on pins i said 48 and 49 right so there it is and then the push button that's on the encoder here um, even though technically that's not part of the same encoder in the simulator i'm just going to go ahead and do heading select for that one so we can do that one on pin number 50 because that's where i put it and you'll notice here when you assign the encoder here it got rid of number 49 because it takes up two pins right so that's why you don't see 49 anymore right here okay we're going to go back to uh the ky040 encoder here and we're going to assign that one to um the altitude select so that's what the one we're going to use for this one this altitude select here so that one if you remember correctly we have it on a multiplexer the same as we have the dual rotary encoder here. So we have to first tell the configurator that we have a multiplexer. So we're going to go to input multiplexers. We select pin right here and we tell it we have it on pin number eight because that's where I always have it connected. And now we can start assigning uh, functions to the pins on that input multiplexer. So we're going to do the altitude here and it you can see right here that it tells you that it's expecting an encoder and we have that one on pins number 13 and 14. So that's already done. And then the push button that is on this one too, we're going to go ahead and assign that one to altitude hold just so that we can give it some job. 
okay so then that's it for that one now we're going to go back over to the dual rotor encoder and i think we're going to use because the perfect uh job for this one is the uh, navcom radios uh tuning because they have an outer and an inner knob we're going to go ahead and do that so we'll go back to the website and this time we will go to the radios here and we'll do com one what do you say so we got the megahertz is going to be the outer knob so that one i think i said is going to be on pin number zero and one for the outer knob and then the inner knob which is the kilohertz is going to be on pins number two and three and of course like i said this one has a push button too so the push button we're going to use for the transfer we're going to use for the frequency transfer for com one and we're going to put that on pin number four because if we go back to my overhead view here you can see that i have the red wire which is the last one uh the first ones are zero one two and three and then the push button is number four of course right so now that we have everything assigned we can go ahead and save the configuration file tell it we want to leave and like always it's going to be in the xplain 11 resources plugins simvmx folder and it's going to be just called data so we'll go ahead and save it in there now i'm going to go ahead and get the simulator started and i'll be back when that's loaded in all right so here we are in the simulator now and we're going to just reload the configuration file just to make sure that we have the one that we just put in there and the one thing i need to bring out is the input options little window here so i'll just go ahead and put that one right here this is where we're going to be able to select uh, the type and the acceleration which is something i didn't mention before but uh it's going to be something that comes into play as you'll see right now all right so first things first remember we assigned the ec11 encoder here to the heading i believe it was right all right so we're going to go ahead and manipulate that one and you can see that the heading is changing and it looks like the directions are the, the right way so you can see that if i go down to the left it, the heading goes down if i go to the right the heading goes up and then the push button was uh it was assigned to the heading select switch right so if i push it oh i forgot i need to turn on a flight director okay so if i push it you can see the heading select gets lit up and then i push it again and it gets deselected so it looks like it's working properly now let's just say for example that you had wired it wrong and that it was doing the opposite then what you need to do is once you have moved the knob you can see right here you can see that you can select what type of uh, encoder it is and also the acceleration and then the inversion so if if we did have it wrong uh, let's just say I'm gonna do it just for the sake of demonstrating this all right there we go i just flipped them now so now when i go down you see the number is going up and when i go up the number is going down so if i didn't want to come back and redo my wire in here because i had already soldered it or something i could just click on inversion put save and reconnect and now when i go to the left it's going to go down and when i go to the right it's going to go up Okay, so the next one we're going to play around with is this one here, which we set up for the altitude. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see that the altitude is increasing and now going to the left is decreasing. So we don't need to do inversion. And like I said before, you can see that these are both type one encoders, right? So now here's the problem, or it's not really a problem because luckily they built this in, but you can see that I have to spin this a lot in order for the altitude to change. See, so if I have to go to 40,000, it's going to take a long time to do this, right? But luckily, they added this uh, acceleration thing. And if we put number three, which is the highest one, we put save and reconnect. Let's see. You can see that I can... It depends how you turn it, too. So you see, it goes up a lot with one little turn. So it depends how you turn it like i said so if you turn it really fast it's not going to do much but if you turn it kind of like i don't even, i don't even know how to describe it it's like if you're pushing it so with a couple of turns you can get it up to forty thousand pretty much so that's really awesome so you can decide you know how much you want to uh, accelerate it and do whatever you feel comfortable with 
Okay, last but not least, we have the dual rotor encoder, which is one of my favorites. And for that, we're going to use a COM1 to see if it's working properly. So if you remember correctly, we have set the outer knob for the megahertz, the inner knob for the kilohertz, and the push button for the frequency transfer, the swap, right? So if we turn this one, this is going to be a perfect example for you to see the type of encoder that it is. So right now you can see that it says that it's also a type 1 because that's what it selects by default, right? So if we turn the knob, you can see that every two clicks, it changes the number 1, right? And the same if we do the inner one. See? It says no, yes, no, yes, no, yes. So obviously that's not the correct way, right? So we have to put type 2 and then save and reconnect and then we can see that it'll work the right way. So I think I did the other one. <laughs> All right, so yes, 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 yes. And then the inner one, yes, yes, yes. So you can see that now it's switching on every click. And when I had the wrong type selected, it wasn't working properly. And then the push button, it was going to be the swap, right? So you can see that the swap is working as well. So that's going to be it for encoders, I think. Um, you know, it's pretty damn awesome. These are very handy. They, they can work for so many different things other than the overhead light switches, which is what I originally started building when I started my setup. When I found out about encoders, you know, especially to tune the frequencies, to do the autopilot heading altitude course and all that speed, um, this was easily one of my favorite components to start putting into my home cockpit here. So just remember you can do inversion with these if you wire them backwards. Uh, remember you have to select the right type and then remember that you can also do acceleration which makes it a lot handier for a lot of things. So that's pretty much all I have for this video. Hopefully you found some of this information useful and if you have not put any encoders into your build yet, hopefully this inspires you to start doing that because they are awesome. All right, so thank you guys very much for watching. And like always, I'll see you on the next one.